one of the most useful tools to use in the electronic world is the oscilloscope. This device allows us to measure the voltage with respect to time. But wait a minute, you can measure voltage with your multimeter, but you cannot measure the voltage with respect to time with the multimeter, because it will give you an average reading. What it means is that the multimeter is very slow, so it won't react to signals, so you cannot measure a proper signal with it. If you're measuring the voltage of a battery or a system where the voltage varies slowly, then you will see it in the multimeter. But if you want to measure a PWM signal, which stands for pulse width modulation, then we won't be able to measure the signal. We will see only the average voltage of it. And that's when we need an oscilloscope to measure and see in detail the signal. In this example, on the left side, we have the multimeter measuring 2.5 volts. And on the right side, we have the same output being measured by the oscilloscope showing us the actual signal, which is a PWM signal, 5 volts when it's high 50% of the time and 0 volts when it's low 50% of the time. And that's why we get 2.5 volts on the multimeter because it's measuring the average. The signals can be very different. PWM is widely used in electronics for many applications. For example, we can use PWM signals to control servos. As you can see here, I'm measuring the output of a receiver, or in this case, a servo tester. And that's the signal a servo gets in order to work. The oscilloscope is a very accurate tool, and it can be also very expensive. Fortunately, I found one which is very, very cheap and also portable. I know it's not a good idea to buy very cheap things, but for the simple stuff I'm going to do, this tool is gonna be enough. Also, what I like about this one is that this is a DIY version, so it comes pre-assembled and we have to assemble the rest of it to make it work. Now, there are many different models in the market that you can buy and they are all very similar and do the same functions. So I'm not saying that this one is better or anything, I'm just saying that it's a good idea to have one in your toolset if you work with electronics. To put together the whole thing is very simple because it comes with very detailed instructions. Step by step, pictures, and also the PCB boards are labeled with all the components you have to put in place. This model comes with SMD components already installed because they are harder to solder in place and very small. But the rest of the components are resistors, push buttons, and stuff like that that are easier to solder in place. These components are called THT, or through hole technology, because they have these little pins that goes through the hole of the PCB and then you can solder it. We have to double check the resistors. I use my multimeter to make sure they are the value it says in the instructions before mounting it onto the PCB. One of the resistors is 5.1 mega ohms, so that's bigger than what I can measure with my multimeter. But by soldering the lower values first, I knew where to put it. After all the resistors were soldered, I started to put the capacitors, also the switches and the input. 
I spent between one and a half and two hours putting together the whole thing. But as I said before, you can buy the already built version for just like five bucks more, which is very cheap for the amount of time you're gonna spend building the whole thing. But I did it because I wanted to have the fun of doing this, although it's very tedious. I'll leave a link in the description of the video where you can find this product. And then came the final moment where I had to put the plastic case. According to the instructions, I had to do a final check with a set of pads and in the paper it told me what voltage should display and with my multimeter I checked everything and everything was alright, so I was ready to go. As for the characteristics of this device, it has one channel, which is ok for this price range. The analog bandwidth is from 0 to 200kHz, which is acceptable and it can be used for most of the simple applications in the electronics like Arduino and others. It has a good sensitivity. The screen is a 2.4 inch color TFT LCD display of 320 by 240 pixels and it has a lot more specifications that I don't even know what they mean and I'm not gonna lie, I'm just a hobbyist so all I'm gonna say is that this device is enough for me and it's gonna do the job that I want it to. Since I don't build very complicated circuits or very accurate things, I don't need a very expensive oscilloscope. We're ready to use it for the first time. Here you can see that I programmed an Arduino with a very simple sketch to generate a PWN signal and then we can read it with our oscilloscope. In future videos I'm going to explain more about PWN signals and we're going to use more this oscilloscope. I hope you liked this video and if you have any comments, questions or anything you want to share, please leave it down below. I'll see you in the next project. <laughs>